Is it filming? We're actually after the wine. We usually. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone. This is Justin Fraperni with White Collar Advice. I'm here today with my good friend Sam Pompeo, and uh, I thought we'd do something a little different today. I lecture a lot at business schools in my alma mater, USC. I spoke to recently, and following a lecture, some students handed me a bunch of questions. They asked if I'd answer them, and I thought it would be fun to do them through. Um, like a Q&A, and I enlisted my friend Sam to come to the home office and ask some questions. So welcome, Sam. Welcome. Happy to be here, thank and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And hey, man, I'm ready to go whenever you are. Yo, awesome. Before I start, I'm going to do a plug of Sam's book, Go Ask Sam, his real estate book. Um, anything you'd like to say about the book? Um, it's free. Grab a copy. Go to my website, Ideal SoCal Homes. Love it. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get started. Let's do it. All right. So, Justin, I have a, a list of questions that uh, students from USC asked uh, following your most recent lecture, so I'm just going to kind of go through them quickly, okay? Yeah. Because there seems to be quite a few. Justin, um, while in prison, can you read whatever you want? Um, you, you can read most of what you want. Of course, you can't read stuff like pornography and stuff like that. And some books yeah. won't get in, like 48 Laws of Power is a book I recommend. Uh, that book... Uh, we'll probably not get into a federal prison, so you can read most of what you want. Um, I hate to deviate, but like politically charged books are okay. Like what, bud? Uh, I don't know. Like yes, you can get books on. There was actually the first fight I heard in a federal prison camp. Someone was talking about Donald Trump, and it didn't play so well with some of the other guys. There was a little argument, but yes, if you wanted to buy "Make America Great Again" or one of his books, it would get through the mail room. Perfect. All right. Okay. Thanks for the follow-up question. Sure. Moving right along. Um, is prison a, a good place to catch up on reading? Yeah, you can read all day. Too passive, though. You want to both read and then implement what you learned. Okay. All right. Um, do they let you have earplugs and eye covers to sleep? What's it like at night? Is it noisy? <laughs> it can be very, yes, it can be very, very noisy. Um, it can be crazy noisy. They'll give you earplugs the day of your surrender. I try to sleep with them. They tended to fall out. They will not give you stuff to cover your eyes, but there will be people making them that you could later buy. They'll make them in the wood job or something like that. So they'll give you earplugs. I did sleep with like the black things that covered my eyes. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, is it true that everyone there in prison will claim that they're innocent? No, that's a, like a misrepresentation. Most people who are there will admit they made a mistake and they're guilty. Some guys will say that they were innocent and they were set up, but I would say most people would say that they're, they're guilty or they did something wrong. In fact, a lot of people will say they're actually guilty and they're there for the wrong crime, but that's a different video. Yeah, I, All right. I can appreciate that. All right, so let's see. In one word, one word, how would you describe prison? Enlightening. Let's go. Fascinating. Um, a, lot of, a lot of, you know, club-fed concept out there. Club-fed? Golf? Tennis, what? So um, Sam and I are members of the country club. We play some golf together. I can tell you, uh, at our country club, there aren't people that defecate in the shower or have swastika tattoos uh, like I saw in prison. So for those that think prison is a club fed, I would say um, not. You could, you could not be more wrong. Don't let the tennis court think it's a club fed. You're around people that you most likely wouldn't surround yourself with in some country club. So no club fed. Okay. Um well, this is a pretty general question, but what, what should I expect going to prison? Uh, what should you expect going to prison? You should expect some ups and downs, just like freedom, just like life. And you should expect some resistance, especially if you're you know, interested in doing great and big things. Resistance from staff, from other prisoners, perhaps even your family. So what do you mean while you're in? They, they don't really want to see you excel? Uh, so there's this question of like, what is a model inmate? And some prisoners will say, I want to be a model inmate. But uh -huh. a model inmate might be uh, not necessarily doing things that are in your best interest. So a model inmate can be doing your, your prison job and laying low and not, for example, creating a business. Or running a business from prison can be a little risky. Right. But if you're focused on life after prison, right. then it's probably in your best interest to pursue it and overcome the risks. Those staff would probably prefer that you do something. Sure, path of least resistance for them. They just want everybody to just kind of like. Yeah, that's why I wouldn't, when people say I'm a model inmate, I don't really know what that means. And what, Got it. I like that. Got it. Yeah. 
Um, what's it like coming out of prison? It, I guess it depends on how you serve your sentence. For me, it was, uh, I had a lot of perspective. I was excited to come home because I felt like I was ready. I saw the world a little bit differently and things that used to really bother me. You've known me a long, long yes. time. So things yeah. that really used to bother me, I, I learned not so much. You learn to kind of let them go and say, you know, it's not such a huge deal. So the irony is the further I get away from prison, I think some more of those tendencies are returning. A little bit. Uh -huh. I mean, I've been home a long time now. Uh -huh. But coming home, you, if you've done it well, you have a, a little bit more perspective. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Um, well, this is, a, this is a question that I that I can relate to. How long would one have to be in before they get a conjugal visit? There are no conjugal visits in federal prison. None? Wow. Okay. I guess no means no. Um, <laughs> prison. Is there state any? prison. In states, state prisons, yes, like in California, there are conjugal visits in state, not in federal prison. No. It's part of the consequence, but no women. Okay. Fair enough. Um, is, there, is there any facility that has golf as a recreational activity? No, but you will see guys using like a broomstick or... Working on golf swing. And I was one of them, yeah. But there's no golf. So there's no golf. Okay, fair enough. Um, can I pay for like extra vegan or gluten free meals? What if I had like a real, you know, dietary need? Yeah, there's no, there's not a, a vegan or a gluten free. There's a, a vegan menu. There's a, you know, the, the orthodox menu or the kosher menu, but there's not a gluten free menu. So mm -hmm. you, you, you might struggle a little bit. Pasta, meatballs? Yeah, but there's no gluten-free menu. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Um, are the bunkhouses climate controlled? Well, yeah, yeah, it can be very. Yeah, it can get really, really. Yeah, because Taft, where I serve time, it can be like 115 degrees during the day. So you'll see most guys inside with the AC going all day long. Yeah, it's very cool and comfortable. Do they have like a little window banger unit, like for each little? What do you mean window banger? Cubicle, like the little window. You turn it on. No, no, you don't have your own. Window. You don't have your own temperature control unit, <laughs> so there's a, where we don't have our own little AC unit, unfortunately. Right. Uh, so now someone's controlling it, but it's not the person. But it's but it is working. Yeah, it's very cool in there. It's very uh, cool. Okay. Um, I know that before you went into prison, you did something very different than what you do now. So truth be told, do you like what you do now for work, or do you like what you used to do? You were a stockbroker, right? I was a stockbroker, then I was a real estate agent with him for three and a half years. When I that got, was the best. When I got fired from UBS, I started working with him the next day, and we sold real estate at Sotheby's for three and a half years. The thing that I miss most, of course, is working with you. Um, but I like I have a little more passion now for helping people than I did selling real estate or selling stock. So I, I Good. So sort of an odd way how I got here, but yeah, I, I enjoy this a little more. Good. All right, well, nice to see that there must have been one Italian student because they asked, how often do they serve spaghetti and meatballs? Uh, they don't serve it much in the chow hall, but you can actually make them. But it's not actually, see, most of the food products there are like turkey for a number of reasons. So you can make pasta, you take your laundry bag, uh -huh. and you put the pasta in there, and you use that like as the strainer, and then you get tomato sauce and like roast beef, and you can find really creative oh, ways. So you won't get the spaghetti and meatballs in the commissary, it's in the chow hall, but you can actually create your own little spaghetti and meatballs. You just have to make them. Oh, interesting. So it would be like microwave? There is a microwave. Food, or there is, how would you cook it? There's a microwave. Oh, you put the pasta in the microwave? Yes. Okay. Um, how much did you pay for it? Like when you'd work a day, how much did you pay? 15 bucks a month and like 15 cents an hour. Some prisoners will, there's t like tier one, two, three, and four. If you want to make more money, you can. The Unicor can pay up to 150 bucks a month. My job in the kitchen, there is an orderly paid about 15 bucks a month. 15 a month? And like 13 cents an hour or something. Like overtime? Work there is no overtime. There's no, no I guess overtime. that you're just there. You're just there, yeah, you're working. All right. You get paid for like eight hours even if you might only work for two, three, or four. Oh, they're worth 15 cents. They can full yeah. well afford it. They can afford it. All right. What was the hardest part about blogging from prison? Committing to doing Seems it. It's very daunting. Committing to doing it every day. Was Ooh, that's it. Oh, yeah. I said I did it every day and I did it. You did it every day. Some days I did more. Yeah, I read the blogs every day. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Um, I'm not sure I understand this. How are prisoners being fed? Uh, we walk down to the, we leave our dorm and we walk down to the chow hall and there are people working, prisoners working in the kitchen who will put the food on your tray. Like slop, like. Is it like where you 
see it like Shawshank, like I'm gonna go look at potatoes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. Well, what's healthcare like? Awful, atrocious, practically non-existent. Stay healthy, don't get hurt, don't do recreational sports that could get you hurt. Really? It's atrocious, it's embarrassing, it's tragic. It's a national tragedy. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, because we could go on about that one, but yeah, we'll just let it lie. Yeah, okay, we'll for do now. that another video. All right, what are the guards like, friendly? I never spoke to them. Okay. Some, some do. They some do what? Speak with them. Uh -huh. Some inmates. Some person. inmates will speak with them. Uh, I would say they have a lethargic indifference to you and their own life. Interesting. Okay. Um, did you see any like fist fights? What happens when you get people fight? I saw uh, an ophthalmologist complaining about the length of his sentence, and some longer term prisoner uh -huh. didn't take too kindly to it, uh -huh. and he kind of politely. It was, okay. it was unfortunate because like he had glasses and the glass broke and for like the rest of his prison term he couldn't get new glasses so it was like duct tape holding them together yeah and it was it was made for a really tough experience so never the, the point is never complain about the length of your sentence right. you're a white collar offender and you're in two three or four years or five years or 18 months you don't bitch about the length of your sentence when your bunkie could gain 20 years for a nonviolent drug crime so some of the and, and if somebody time. if if somebody was to engage in a, in a fight, would they be elevated to like the next level of security, or do they go into yeah. like a? So in that case, they did not get transferred to a higher security prison because it can be a disciplinary infraction and a transfer. In that case, right. both of the prisoners went to the SHU, which is the uh, hole. Uh, they ultimately came back. Both of them stayed in the camp. Uh, there, there were instances where, with fighting, you will go to the hole and potentially be transferred to a different. Camp or a higher security facility. Okay, not good. Are there dead weights there? Like, if you wanted to really bulk up, it's at the discretion of the warden. Tap camp did not have weights. Other facilities do have weights. Do have weights. Um, was the cost to live there like a monthly charge? So What's I have rent? I have clients that spend in the commissary with phone and email anywhere from fifty dollars a month to like thirteen hundred dollars a month. But if you were to just live there what's the base rent zero which is subsidized by the taxpayer so we're not oh. paying for any of that it does cost to live commissary email phone stamps um, so like I said I have clients that spend anywhere from $50 a month uh -huh. the most I've ever had a client spend I think was $1,300 a month that's a little large $1,300 yeah they can do it okay. um, I was like in between you were in the, in, in the middle like $600 $600 okay you can't live on that now no not any longer Commissary then was two ninety. Now it's three sixty. What a flat rate a month. Yeah, but it's a flat rate. It keeps going up. It's more expensive to live. Is that there. all you can eat? It's not all you can eat. No, three meals a day in the commissary in the three meals a day in the chapel in the commissary. And then snacks you buy like if you snacks want you buy in the commissary or yeah, something. Yeah. Like cheese puffs. Okay. Um, Don't buy the cheese puffs. Stay out. We're all about healthy. Can, we're, not eating, we're not eating cheese puffs. Okay. Can you go to college while you're there? Yes, some prisons will allow you to go to college. TAP, you can go to the community, TAP Community College, so yes. If you're going through the drug program, it's harder to participate in college programs because you're in the nine-month, 500-hour program, but yes, some prisons you can go to a community college and other colleges. Like physically on the, the, the campus? Mix, the, or? No, they're going to bring the books to you. Teachers oh, okay. are going to come there, okay. and you're kind of like your correspondents. Okay, fair enough. All right. Um, kind of odd, but is there anything that you miss about prison? The rigid structure of knowing exactly what I would be doing at every second of really? every day. I really did. Okay. You used to visit me there. What would I tell you? What, what I don't know. You were really tan and in great shape every time I saw you. <laughs> okay. It was awesome. Um, what's the email system? Is it like Yahoo or Gmail or is it? Do I have my phone? Oh, the phone is recording. Uh, it's a closed monitored system where it's through CoreLinks or JPay. It's a closed monitored system. Where it takes about when you send an email, it takes an hour to make its way out. It takes about an hour to make its way back. Uh -huh. it, they're saved. They can be read and monitored. There are buzzwords that they'll look for. Um, it's a pretty efficient system, especially core links, and um, it's pretty good. You can email a bunch of people at one time. So when I email my clients, I can include you know all of them at one time if I send you know a lengthy email, so I don't have to do it individually. It's very nice, and they can do the same. If you have 100 people on your email list or 50 people, you can email all those people. And it's pretty efficient. I knock the BOP a lot. That's one thing they do pretty good. Really nice system. 
All right. Well, that's it's nice to be able to communicate nice. with the outside world a bit. Yeah, I think so. Um, does a phone? How much does a phone call cost? Like, are you putting ten cents in the thing or what? You, you're, no, no, it varies. Three hundred phone minutes a month locally will cost you about sixty bucks a month. Okay. Um, can items like vitamins, a protein powder? No, be none of it. No, you cannot ship anything no. to the prison but some books, some magazines. If this is the Bureau of Prisons, it is a profit-making enterprise. They want you to buy everything from the commissary. Cookies and gift baskets. They're not making their money. Okay, fair enough. So I guess that means that you can't have Amazon send something. Amazon and Barnes & Noble can send books. Really? So you can buy it and send it. But I cannot send you like protein powder or a gift basket or cookies and stuff like that. It's got a, Amazon and Barnes & Noble, that sort of thing. So whatever comes in, obviously, they're going to open the package. And if it's book, then they're going to let it come through. Correct. Okay. Um, so what question are we on? I kind of lost track. I'm just jumping around. I noticed you've been I, making up some of your own questions. You know, well, we had extra time to kill. <laughs> um, I think I'm on either 29 or 27, but we'll just press on. What author influenced you the most in prison? I know you're a big reader of, you know, the... All those esoteric type of. <laughs> Thank uh, San, my, Michael Santos. Michael Santos was the author that influenced you the most in prison. So I got to prison. I met Michael. I read his book Inside Life Behind Bars in America. He uh -huh. told me that he wrote the book from prison. I was inspired. He mentored me, and I learned from every day. And with uh -huh. his help, I then wrote Lessons from Prison. So not, but thank you, thank you for the shameless plug of that book. Thank you. Bill O'Reilly does it. He plugs the book a lot. Tons. I've read the book. Actually, it's a good book. And I read Michael's book, Earning Freedom, an, an incredible book. Earning Freedom is number one on my recommended book list. Yeah, it's a good read. It's a good read. It's pretty fun. Yeah, Earning Freedom, Lessons from Prison. Sam is also in Lessons. O'Reilly does promote his books. He, Shamelessly all the time. Yeah. But he sells a lot of them. He sells so a lot Justin's of book is free. Go to his website and get it's it. It's free. The book yeah, is free. It doesn't cost nothing. He sells them. Correct. All right. Fair enough. Um, no premium membership here. There's no premium membership. No, there's no premium okay. membership. Um, do you have privacy in the bathroom? Yes. Like a stall? You're in a stall, Door? Yes. Yeah. The whole thing. Okay. In um, a federal prison camp, sometimes if you're in a county jail or a detention center, you might be using the restroom in front of 30 or 40 guys. My first monkey told me when he was in the county jail for a while, they used to hold up sheets so someone could use the restroom in privacy. But inside the federal prison camp, we have privacy within the stalls. Very nice. Thank you. Somewhat humane. Um, is everybody there a white collar offender? No, it, it, most federal prison camps you'll see five to twelve to thirteen percent white collar offenders. The rest are nonviolent um, drug offenders, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I would say five to ten percent white collar offenders. Um, you know, based on the length of this video, maybe we should break it up into two videos. What do you think? Do you I'm cool with that. Let's do one more question. One more question, we, then we're going to go to a second video. Okay. Yeah, that'll be a good spot for me to leave off. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, can you give me an example of like a prison hustle? The prison hustle? Yeah. Sure. So when I surrendered to prison, I tried to manipulate the system a little bit too quickly, in part because I, uh, I wanted things more quickly and probably I should have been more patient. So someone came up to me that first night and said, hey dude, I can get you a better mattress. The first the, night. The first night. First. Because the mattress is like as thin is as thick as my book and it's not probably that thick. And it's probably not quite as soft. Yeah, correct. So the guy's like, would you like a new mattress? I'm like, who wouldn't like a new mattress, right? I want one. Who wouldn't want a new mattress? Right. So the guy came up to me like it. We're actually now friends on Facebook. He okay. gave, yeah, he's out now too? He's been out for years. Great guy. Anyway, he brought me the mattress that like he knocked on my, he woke me up like at 1 a.m. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I got you a mattress. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I got, I got you a bigger mattress. So it went from like this right. to like that. Right. And I was like, thanks, man. Right. And it was great. And then like three days later, he's like, I need you to get this for me. What do you need? He's like, well, I got you a that. mattress. What do you pay that? Right. What do you want? He wanted like roast beef and Diet Coke and commissary. I'm like, I got you just a mattress. Oh, but it wasn't anything. You had to do something illegal, right? But I shouldn't have gotten a mattress that quickly because you need to get approval for a bigger mattress. Some guys put two mattresses together and then they do random checks because somebody turned them in. It was a total nightmare. I got hustled into getting a thicker mattress because uh -huh. three days later you uh -huh. gave me a commissary shopping list. Got it. For roast beef and Diet Coke. Perfect. And for now, that's all. Awesome.